All right, hello everybody. In week 12. Um, that leaves us four more to go after this one. So pretty good. Um, we're getting there. Um, <clears throat> we're in April 5th, week of April 5th. We've been working on lawnmowers, zero turns, walk behind the last couple weeks. Um, now we're going to go starting on the handheld stuff. <clears throat> we're going to kind of lump in uh, weed eaters, you know, string trimmers as well, blowers. They're all two cycle engines. Um, two cycle engines meaning they mix gas and oil together. There's not a gas compartment in an oil compartment. You mix the two together, put it in the fuel tank. That's a two cycle engine. Um, most of your string trimmers, your blowers, your edgers, all that handheld stuff runs off of a two cycle engine. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. <clears throat> um, in lab on the fifth, we will utilize those, uh, put those pieces of equipment into action um, in correlation to the lawn mowing that we do, right? So when you're mowing, there's mowing, and then your weed eater is going to clean up all the edges. Your edger is going to go along your hard surfaces, mainly sidewalks, roads, whatever you have on that aspect. Some hardscapes if you are, if there's some pavers and things along that line. You're going to use your blower to clean it all up. <clears throat> um, that's kind of the gist of it. Um, there's efficient ways to do it. There's non-efficient ways to do it. Uh, we'll talk about those in the lab. A uh, little bit of the lecture, we talk about statistics, something that I normally hit on, just injury related things. Um, we'll go over safety components of the weed eaters, the blowers, the edgers, they're all gonna be very similar. Um, then I got a couple videos. Um, then I got the motivational piece at the end. So we'll go ahead and get started and we'll do the motivational piece, um, public speaking aspect if we get, uh, if I have enough time. So a couple of statistics, okay. Uh, 1989, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission reported that power lawn trimmers and edgers alone have caused about 4,600 injuries annually um, that require medical attention. About one third of these were eye related. <clears throat> Obviously wearing your safety glasses will help those eye related injuries. Um, but a lot of what you deal with with the weed eaters um, and edgers is obviously things kicking up at you or working along in a group uh, on your crew and a couple people working in the same area, obviously, you know, close proximity to somebody else using a weed eater and an edger, those things kick up to somebody working next to you as well, not just yourself. String trimmers is known to throw stone sticks and other objects at high speeds. Lawn edgers with metal blades are capable of cutting through underground objects splintering concrete and causing sparks. Um, heavy hedge trimmers are known to cause accidents, particularly when operators are fatigued, right? So <clears throat> when you are weed eating, when you are edging, you know, outside of a residential lawn, unless it's a very large residential lawn, you know, sometimes the weed eater, the weed eater guy, he could be running a weed eater for multiple hours out of the day. I mean, in all honesty, he can he can he can run a weed eater eight hours a day. If you think about a big commercial site, think about a, a mall complex, think about a hospital complex, think about apartment complexes, think about commercial um, commercial shopping complexes, all those types of things, right? I mean, you're taking your weed eater from one end to the next to the next to all these little different spots. You know, a shopping center. How many islands are in a shopping center? You know, so it can be a lot of walking, a lot of fatigue carrying that thing. It's not heavy as you as you hold it necessarily, 20, 20 pounds probably on the heavy end. Um, but you hold that thing for multiple hours a day, it gets to be heavy. Fatigue sets in as you walk all over the place, whether it's hot, um, that doesn't help either, right? So just things that um, you need to pay attention to. 
So some general safety rules, then we'll kind of dive into each um, individual one. I'll kind of go through some of these a little a little quickly because they do get um, they do get repetitive, right? But we always start with the owner's manual um, with any sort of piece of equipment that we operate. Read it, understand it. Safety measures in it. There's um, what's the um, maintenance oriented items in those safety or in the operator's manuals, right? Uh, maintenance intervals, all those types of things are in there. So they help you understand that piece of equipment from the safety end to the operating end to the maintenance aspect of it, upkeep of that piece of equipment. <clears throat> Obviously don't allow children to operate these power tools, but watch where the children are when you're operating. It's not just children, it's pets, it's bystanders. You know, think about when you are um, out there on a job and you're mowing and it's a commercial site. Um, it can be a residential site as well. The dog is out, the pets are outside, whatever the case is, right? Um, but if you're on a commercial site, people are going and coming to work. There's vehicles in the parking lot. Um, there's customers going to uh, restaurants, retail places, depends on what you're mowing and the application of what that business is. There's people coming and going. Um, so when you're operating these things, be aware of the people that are around you including children and pets. Wear your eye and your ear protection. <clears throat> Wear your protective clothing, long plants, long pants, closed toe shoes, gloves, um, nothing loose. Similar same to a lot of the other equipment that we've used. Take a look around, inspect your area, right? Um, see if there's any down limbs, um, see if there's any loose wires, whether it's um, power cords or whatever might be laying around. Um, you know, you hit those things and they bust up and they get flung out. Um, that's that's the danger of what, what these tools create, okay? Um, do not operate any power tool under the influence of alcohol, medication, drugs, or when you're fatigued. And as you guys manage and you guys run crews and you guys operate businesses, um, you know, don't let your employees slide on that aspect either, right? Hold, hold your employees accountable for showing up to work and being, being in their best state of mind. Okay, don't start up a gas-powered engine inside. Uh, breathing the exhaust fumes can be fatal, right? We talked about that with large, larger equipment as well. Probably something you think about more on the larger equipment than you do on the smaller equipment. <clears throat> But you know, when those uh, a blower is putting out fumes, just as just as fatal, fatally, if you will, um, as a tractor, as your car, um, those types of things. Okay, when you're feeling and premixing uh, your your fuel. Wipe up any spillage. Uh, replace the fuel cap um, to eliminate the contamination and any explosions. Right. So just watch where you're fueling. Watch any of the spillage. Watch where, watch where all that is, is being taken place, right? And never leave anything unattended. Um, <clears throat> one thing that you need to watch out for when you are on a crew and running your own landscape business is, you know, what, what is your safety on your, on your vehicle, right? Um, you know, it, 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 it's twofold, right? You don't want, let's just say you don't want to be at a, a retail, a retail complex where there's, um, a, a shopping center where there's multiple people coming in and out. You have your vehicle there. Somebody gets curious. They pick it up. They start messing around. Something bad happens. You don't want them to be able to pick that up. The other aspect is, is you don't want somebody to steal it either, right? So you want to make sure that it's locked. It's secured. People can't gain access to those things. Take it from one who has had the experience. Not just people picking it up. Theft is a major thing. Um, you know, had a uh, truck get broken into, um, was called by the manager um, from the complex that we were maintaining. Um, and by the time I got out to the job site, which was, you know, within 30, 45 minutes or so, um, they had caught the guy who stole the stuff. He had already offloaded the equipment. 
Um, he, he, they didn't find the equipment with them. So, you know, the stuff is very easily resellable, pawn store, whatever the case is. Um, so not only is it safety from somebody picking it up from you being unattended, but, you know, the, um, the ease of stealing and reselling these types of things is, is very easy. So you want to make sure you do a pre-inspection, <clears throat> right? So understand the information that's provided in the owner's manual um, before using, always inspect the equipment for damage, disrepair, um, make sure all the, uh, the shields are in place. Uh, you know, a lot of, it, it, it's very common that you take off the the, the shield, the guard, on the weed eater, you know, because the string can only cut six inches long with that guard on, six, eight inches. You take that guard off, you know, you can whip around a piece of weed eater string, you know, a foot long and move a whole lot quicker. Um, but there's nothing guarding you from anything kicking back up at you, right? So things to keep in, um, things to keep in mind. If you're using an electrical um, trimmer that actually plugs into the wall, you know, make sure that electrical cord is um, in good operating standards too, okay? If the equipment fails pre-inspection, remove it from service and label it, right? You know, remove it. We talked about it with chainsaws, remove it um, in an instance to where somebody's not gonna pick that up and say, gee whiz, you know, what's wrong with this thing? And, start cranking on it themselves and injure themselves or whatever the case might be, right? So label it, put it out to where nobody, where, where, where somebody's gonna know that that is not operating properly. Okay, in specifics to string trimmers and weed eaters, uh, make sure all the trimmer heads are equipped with safety shields. Like I said, one of the main things with somebody that's running a weed eater for multiple hours a day, they'll take that guard off. <clears throat> because that string can just be longer. They don't have to worry about, um, it just can, they can weed eat a whole lot faster. But that guard is on there for a reason. Uh, it's for their safety. Um, you just need to make sure that it's being operated and in, in, in intact properly. Um, if there's two cycle engines, you know, they run on oil and gas mix. Uh, make sure that you are providing your crew with the proper mix, too much oil, too little gas, too much gas, not enough oil. It's a bad combination, right? There's a specific mix rate for two cycle engines. Uh, they do make it easy nowadays where you can buy it pre-mixed. Uh, we talked about that with a little bit with the chainsaws. <clears throat> when you were running these gas powered equipment, um, these two cycle oil uh, engines, you, you know, your, your, your crew, yourself, you know, they're going to go through more than one tank, you know, in a day. So they're going to keep, you know, mixing this stuff up uh, when they're when they're constantly mowing all day long. So there's more opportunity for the mix rates to get off. So you need to make sure that you are uh, setting them up for success to make sure that that equipment is getting a proper mix. Um, to make sure the life cycle of that equipment is, is being utilized and you don't cut the life cycle short because you're not mixing it properly. So allow your crew the opportunity to mix it properly with you providing them with the, number one, the education of it, but number two, the tools in order to do that, okay? Don't just think that they, that they know it or they're gonna do it right um, because they may think it, it runs better or it doesn't smoke as much as if you don't put more oil or you use more gas, whatever the case is, don't allow them to make that decision um, because it's about the manufacturer's decision on that, not, not your crew member, right? <clears throat> your employee. Um, gas powered trimmers are, are, are heavy, right? Um, they expose you to vibration, the noise of it, um, you know, but they can get it can make you tired after a period of time too. So you need to make sure that they're being uh, mindful as they get later in the day and they get a little more fatigued, right? So gas powered versus an electrical, you know, now we, now we have battery powered 
Um, the battery powered allow you to do what the gas power does as far as being um, more versatile to move around uh, the property and you're not plugged into the wall. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, maybe, maybe this week there'll be a little question on gas battery, gas, gas power versus battery power. Um, kind of discuss it. We've talked about it briefly, but we haven't really had a discussion on it. So we will, um, we will touch base on that a little bit in a little bit. All right, string trimmer safety. Strict uh, inspect it for loose fasteners, fuel leaks, cracks, chips, any of that type of stuff, just like you would any other piece of equipment before you get on it, right? Um, you know, make sure the handles are on there property, properly, they're secure, right? Um, whatever the case may be. Uh, replace anything that's damaged, tighten it all up, <clears throat> make sure that you are dressed properly, um, you know, secure your hair, um, make sure you're wearing your proper PPE. Um, you know, you don't have any loose clothing on, uh, you have your ear protection, your eye protection on, um, all those types of things when you're getting ready to operate these things. Um, maintain your balance and your firm footing when you're on a string trimmer, right? Because a lot of those areas that you're going to be using the weed eater than string trimmer is going to be where the lawnmower can't get, uh, which means it's either a little slope it's up against the building, whatever the case is, right? There's going to be a little different type of terrain to where you're where you're going with the with the string string trimmer. Now it can be just around the trees, um, in a large turf area, but then again, it's going to mostly be around where the mower can't get, which is usually some uneven terrain <clears throat> back in the corner of some areas, whatever the case is, right? Only use the string trimmer for for grass and similar weeds, right? Um, string trimmer will cut, I don't want to say trees, but it'll cut some small diameter things, right? But that's not what it's for. You're going to eat through string. Um, it's going to, it, it's going to chip off that, that, that wood, whatever it is, right? And that wood's going to fly and it's not designed to do that. Um, you know, so keep it to weed, keep it to weeds, keep it to grass. <clears throat> That's what the string trimmer is designed to cut, not anything else, okay? Um, when you are weed eating out and about, make sure you're not overreaching. Keep it below your waist, just like if you were operating a chainsaw, you know, above your head. Same thing with the, the weed eater. It needs to be close to the ground. It doesn't trim, doesn't trim loose trees or, um, you know, low hanging branches off of a tree, whatever the case is up above your head. It's not what it's designed for. Um, so we don't take it above our waistline. Okay. Protective guards, protective guards on a string trimmer on the edger, all the same things you need to do that. Okay. Um, string trimmers, obviously they, they, they work off of the, the string line, check it, you can bump it, um, you know, don't, don't, if you over bump it, you know, it's going to cut that line and it spits the line out. So just kind of keep mindful of how much you're doing that because it's dangerous when you keep bumping it and cutting the excess line off. So there's a cutter on the, that, um, on that guard that allows the, the string to operate inside that guard length. Okay, so every time you're bumping it, cutting off that extra weed eater string, um, it's kicking it out and it's and it's dangerous. <clears throat> Another reason why people take the guard off so they can bump it as long as they want and you know it is what it is too. But um, so just be mindful of, of that guard and what it's designed to do and why people take it off will will help you understand to keep a better eye keep a better focus on it. Lawn edger safety, very similar type things, right? Check and make sure everything's in, in uh, firmly attached, <clears throat> handles, the blade. Um, don't use the edger on gravel surfaces. It's just gonna kick up rocks. 
Um, there's going to be enough rocks along the edges of, of the turf that you mow anyway, whether it's on a driveway, uh, road, uh, island in a parking lot, whatever the case is, there's going to be enough rocks to gather there anyhow. Um, you know, so you need to be mindful of that when you're using an edger. But if you're on a gravel surface, you need to weed eat that as best you can, spray it. Um, all that all that lawn edger is going to do is kick up that gravel and cause a whole bunch of problems. Okay, same thing, lawn edger has a guard as well. <clears throat> that guard keeps it from kicking up um, the debris. Can save you, save you from getting injured, can save everybody's car from getting injured when you are, or, or damaged, I should say, um, when you are around a public place and there's vehicles in, in, in the area. You know, they can do a lot of damage when they kick up a rock and they throw it to a vehicle. So keep the edger guard in place, might help you save a little bit of money with replacing some car, car damage doors, dings on doors, cracked windshields, whatever the case that is. It happens. Um, it's part of the job, uh, but they do get expensive too. Okay, don't don't start the edger with the blade in contact with the ground, right? You know, hold it up because that blade is going to start spinning. Um, that blade can, um, as it's cutting along concrete, can do sparks can create sparks. So you, know, you need to make sure you're being mindful of that as well, right? So if you're um, along, along some concrete and it sparks and there's some wires there, you know, bad combination, right? If you cut through electrical wires that you're not paying attention to, um, bad combination. You know, you cut through it, kicks up a spark, whatever the case is, it sparks, hits the wire, you don't see it, all those types of things. So just be, just be mindful of the things that the edger does as you are edging along. I mean, it's cutting in, um, so it will obviously cut the things in front of it as well. Hedge trimmer is another piece of equipment <clears throat> commonly used, right? So similar, same thing, you know, obviously those hedge trimmers are going back and forth. That's how they do their cutting. Um, the teeth on that thing are going back and forth. And as the, um, as the branch gets in between those teeth, that's what cuts it, right? So obviously you want to keep your hands and your fingers away from that. Careful with, with, with gloves when you're operating the hedge trimmers too. You get, get a glove caught in there, it's going to cut that glove, pull that glove into it, throw your finger into it, all those types of things. Okay, hedge trimmers, um, once again, is not a heavy piece of equipment from the standpoint of and you pick it up and you hold it. But once again, hedge trimming uh, is something that your crew you know, very, very easily could do all day long. Um, you know, you can, you can trim bushes all day, every day. And there's some crews that do that, right? So fatigue sets in um, and as your hedge trimming and it's waist high, chest high, and you're going back and forth. I mean, you know, that's that, that, that 20 pounds gets, gets heavy after a while. So things that you need to keep in mind. Okay. Um, power cords, you know, be, be mindful when you're trimming hedges, um, power cords, there's things laying in bushes, especially around some homeowner residential stuff. Um, just be mindful because it'll cut through that stuff and it's and it's very dangerous as well. Um, don't leave it unattended. Um, nothing overhead, kind of like I mentioned before. Kind of kind of similar same type thing. Um, leaf blower is a little different. Um, you know, same same basic stuff. Uh, leaf blower, you're usually blowing things away from you. Um, so you need to look out for pedestrians, pets, all those types of things that are in the way. Because what you're doing is, is you're blowing things away and it's blowing them out there into somebody, into something. <clears throat> it can be pedestrians, can be pets, can be cars as well, right? So um, keep that in mind. You're blowing things, you're blowing things out. It hits the curb line. Some of those things can kick back as well. Um, so you just need to make sure that you are paying attention to all those things with, with, with the blower aspects, okay? 
Um, I'm not going to go through all of these. You can kind of see a lot of these are the same things. Um, little, you know, how to safety watch. You know, what do we what do we have here? We're out here on the job site. A couple guys doing their thing. Um, you know, what do, we, what do we have? Right? We got a guy with a weed eater. <clears throat> What's he missing? You know, he's holding the weed eater right. He looks good that way. Does he have any safety glasses? Have any hearing protection? You got the guy blowing right behind you. What's he doing, right? I mean, he seems to be holding it right. It's it's on both of his shoulders. I mean, he's doing good on that. Um, no eye protection with him. No hearing protection with him. And I mean, he's right behind that guy, right? I mean, so where's he blowing all that debris? He's blowing it right up in his buddy's face. Um, so, you know, a couple things to a couple things to pay attention to on that, right? So what is it? I mean, they, they talk about safety vests. You're out here on the road too. Um, do you have anything high visible? Uh, do you have a sign out there? What, what else? What, what what other safety things that, that, that can they put out there to show people that they're out there working, right? Traffic cones, those, those types of things. Okay. So these are the things that you want to make sure, number one, you, you educate your employees on. Um, because when he gets hurt and he gets something in his eye, he's not working, he's not making you money, and now it's costing you a um, it's costing you a medical bill on, on top of that. Okay. So these Husqvarna videos I thought were pretty good um, from the other week. And they kind of go through some of the things. So we'll watch a little bit of it, kind of talk about it. We're going to skip through some of it as well, okay? So just kind of going back to that um, edge in here, right? Oh, yeah. See if I can pause it on this. Okay, so I mean, as he's edging <clears throat> here, right? That's how you're going to edge that tree ring. What you know? What what is that creating, right? I mean, that's creating a whole lot of debris kicking up. Okay, so he's doing his thing right. That's going to look nice when it's done, um, but he's kicking up that mulch. So you have to think, you know, are there vehicles around? Where are the people that you're working with? You know, all those types of things. Do you have your safety glasses on? Because that's coming up, even though that guard's on on there. You know, things ricochet, things do that type of thing. So, you know, you need to be mindful of, of, of how much power and, and, the, and, and where we're working and what we're working around um, for that, for, for those types of things to, you know, the accidents to, to occur. Right, so he is he is weed eating something that the mower can't get, right? He's in between places. You know, this, this video is probably being taped, you know, specifically in, in this environment, but you know, you, you in you in this environment, you me and the next guy in this environment, there's gonna be a car here, right? I mean that's the reality, right? I mean it's a parking lot, there's gonna be a car there. <clears throat> so you need to, you know, you need to pay attention to, you know, how this, how this piece of equipment is going to kick debris and grass and uh, rocks if they're there, mulch, all that type of stuff on these vehicles, um, you know, as you, as you are, as you are operating these things. So you need to be mindful of, of what it is. Before we 
discuss trimming techniques. Let's take a closer look at some of the key components of the trimmer. Can we see the trimmer head? Grease filler cap. Bevel gear. Cutting attachment card. Shaft. So this is the guard we keep talking about, right? <clears throat> it's important to keep it in place. It, it helps deflect things from kicking up against you as the operator um, and keeps things contained as well, um, not only protecting yourself, but things that are around you. This is, you know, in a commercial landscape business, you know, the first thing that somebody is going to take off of this weed eater. Um, it will be a battle you fight <clears throat> with your employees, uh, especially when they operate this piece of equipment for long periods of time. They do not like it. It holds them down. It holds them back. Um, you just need to be aware that they are going to continually take this off and you are going to continually have to keep telling them to put that back on. Stop switch. Throttle trigger lock out. Spark plug cap and spark plug. Cylinder cover. Starter handle. Fuel tank. Air filter cover. Air purge. steps you can take to protect yourself is to wear the proper personal protective equipment when you use the trimmer. When operating a trimmer, be sure to wear hearing protection, eye protection, and safety boots, or other approved footwear. Your boots should have non-slip soles and tied laces. You should also wear approved gloves. Be sure to wear clothing that fits properly. Don't wear baggy clothes or anything with loose sleeves or strings. They can get caught up in the trimmer parts and injure you quickly and seriously. You should also wear long pants, short sleeve ear So these are the areas that you're going to be using that we need, right? This place, it's, you know, kind of in this little, I want to say ditch, but it's down in this little, you know, deep, small little area where the mower can't get. Um, you know, Lots of trees around here, lots of debris that can that can fall down, right? So you just need to be mindful. That's the uneven terrain that you're walking on, and the debris in the in the turf that you're going to be working against. Um, that's that's common places for weed eaters. Um, so those are the those are the the site evaluations that you need to make sure that you're aware of. seriously damage the trimmer's engine. We recommend using Husqvarna XV two-stroke pre-mixed fuel. So that's what we, you know, what I've talked about before is what the steel guy talked about. Husqvarna, the next brand manufacturer is going to have their own fuel mix, all that kind of thing. Um, the fuel mix is expensive, you know, comparably speaking to buying a oil, um, two cycle oil container and mixing it in a fuel. Um, but you also have the proper, the proper mix rate. So <clears throat> a lot of times when you have multiple crews, multiple people, you have multiple gas tanks on this, on this vehicle, on this truck, you know, 
same guy may not be mixing it. All these factors that kind of go into the wrong mixture of a, of a two cycle engine. So just keep that in mind. Um, it's a it's part of your business, part of your management um, that takes place, um, you know, for lawn maintenance that, that you need to figure out, you know, which is, which is best. Is it, can I train my crew well enough that I can, they can mix their own and we can save that money? Or is it just not worth it in the longevity of the equipment and the ease of them not having to worry about it? We just buy the, we just buy the pre-mixed stuff and, you know, move on down the road. Like I said, just it, it's each specific person, each specific business, you guys make that call, but um, it is a decision that you need to be aware of. Husqvarna pre-mixed fuel is specifically formulated to provide optimal equipment performance. It's convenient, ready to use, and requires a ventilated area. Do not have Skip ahead here a little bit. Spillage, talked about that. Pretty standard on on different models as well, right? You can um, you prime it as you're hitting that bulb, right? Until the engine or until the gas fills fills that bulb, um, and then you put your choke on, and then once the engine pops, as if it tried to start, that's enough choke, and then you take that choke off, and then you should be able to pull it once, pull it twice, and the engine should start. Um, that's the ideal starting um, mechanism for any of two cycle, not just um, weed eaters here. It's the same for an engine, same for a blower, um, same for a hedge trimmer, gas power hedge trimmer, same type of thing. So, you know, starting, you know, the starting procedure is, is very similar on, on all of them. Let's see what else is on this video and then we'll kind of go to the, to the next. See what else they talk about here. They are extremely powerful and effective when used properly. Let's watch as our operator demonstrates some basic trimming techniques. Before we start, remember to lower the throttle after each trim or cut. Don't leave the throttle high for long periods if you're not trimming. This can lead to serious engine damage. Also, plan your route in advance so you don't wind up going over the same territory twice and wasting time. 
trimming. Our operator is going to start by trimming grants along a wall with the grants trimmer head. Notice how he holds the trimmer head just above the ground at an angle that will deflect the green away from him. Be patient and let the line do the work when you're trimming. Never press the trimmer line into the ground or trimming area. Keep making passes until the cut is finished. Going too fast can cause the line to nearly bend the grass instead of trimming it. Trimming requires a steady hand. You're working around fences, trees, okay, so that's, that's good information, right? So the, the way that this operator in the video is being shown, the way he's mediating now, everything is throwing away from him. So this mediator head, string trimmer head is rotating in a counterclockwise fashion, and it's throwing it out in front of him, right? So if he were to walk the other way, it's going to kick it back to him because the weed ear head is still going to spin in the same direction. Okay. So there is a way to operate that weed eater where it flings it out away from you. And that's what he has been uh, demonstrating in his, in the video here and the way that he's walking. Okay. So keep that in mind. There is a way for you to, kick things away from you. Doesn't mean you're still not gonna get something in your leg um, or the potential for that to happen. But, you know, there is a, there is a, when you're paying attention to the way that the piece of equipment operates, there is a way to operate that piece of equipment and then not kick everything at you, okay? All right, let's move on to leaf blower here, see what they, show on the leaf, leaf blower. <clears throat> Welcome to this training module on Husqvarna blowers. Husqvarna blowers are powerful tools to blower, as well as how to use blowers safely. It is very important that the operators read and understand the operator's manual before operating. So we'll go over the components. Let's get started. We'll let them go over the components and a little yeah, couple of tricks. dampening system. Elbow. Flexible hose. Control handle slash operating handle. Stop switch cruise control. Throttle trigger. Control pipe. Intermediate pipe, lower nozzle, like any other tool. Okay, we talked about PBE. They go through the fueling as well. Probably go through the starting. Let's see. All right, starting and stopping. It's very similar, like I said to the other one. Okay. For 
see what this next one is, and then we open the hard straps and let the machine fall backwards. <clears throat> With the blower fueled up and the harness in a comfortable position, go over the use in a little bit. See, a lot of that stuff just can kick back to, right? It can kind of blow up, get in your eyes, get in your face, um, somebody walking by, that lingering dust, all that type of stuff. So those are the, you know, some of the safety components, right? You want to make sure you have your eyeglasses on, um, be mindful of people walking by, children, pets, all that type of stuff. I mean, it, it really, uh, the blower can really create a dust dusty environment, um, you know, think about what we have going on now with pollen, uh, pollen season, you know, it's, it's not, it's not kicking as we speak of April 5th, um, but probably on April 8th, you know, it could be kicking. Um, and just think of all that, all that pollen that you could be blowing that's laying on this sidewalk that, um, gets gets blown around when you were operating this it's um just you have to be mindful of it and, and pay attention okay but i think that was pretty good with both of these two pieces of equipment <clears throat> like i say a lot of the safety aspect from one to the next on the handheld two cycled stuff is very similar starting them is very similar the fuel mix is very similar it's just how you how you decide to to mix that fuel um so we will operate those as we go through um, um, lab on the fifth, get you accustomed to them. Um, you can feel the, uh, the, 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 the power that they have, um, how, they, how they kick when they buy on something. You know, when, you, when you're weed eating into something, how it, how it affects the, the handling of it, all that type of stuff. Um, the blower is you're holding the, the throttle and it's creating that wind tunnel. Um, you know, it's, you know there's, you're going to have to hold it and there's some force behind that. So, um, you know, we can experience all that aspects. Okay. Um, Simon Sinek is our motivational speaker. Um, we are all leaders. Um, this is about leaders that don't understand the game that they're in. Um, you know, it's a pretty good, pretty good video. You don't have a whole lot of time. Um, you know, I really hope you guys watch it. Um, I'll, 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 I'll start it for a moment. Um, but I really hope you guys watch the remainder of it because it's, it's really good.
as I talk, I mean, about, you know, different um, speakers and presentations and things like that. You know, he's groomed well, postured well, knows his topic. Um, as you as you watch this video and, and, and you see his style, um, he mentions about having a cell phone. Um, you know, he doesn't have his cell phone when he's talking. Uh, he doesn't have his notes on his cell phone. Um, all those types of things. Um, but a very knows his knows his subject. Um, is dressed for the occasion. Is dressed for the part. Um, you know, and then the, just the way he he engages with the audience in this is is good. But it's it's about leadership. Um, it's about you as a leader understanding people that work for you. So I'm embarrassed that I have a career. I talk about things like trust and cooperation, and there should be no <clears throat> demand for my work. But the fact of the matter is, is there is demand for my work, which means that there's an opportunity. It means that trust and cooperation are not yet standard in our organizations, and yet they should be, and we know that, which is why we're looking for ways to bring those things to our organizations. So I thought I would do something a little different today. You know, when you're speaking to tens of thousands of people and you have the opportunity to share a message, of course, most rational people would say, let's go with something I've talked about lots of times and I'm really good at, but I'm not normal, so I'm going to do something completely new, and I will look that. There are two things that I think that great leaders need to have, empathy and perspective. And I think these things are very often forgotten. Leaders are so often so concerned about their status or their position in the organization, they actually forget their real job. And the real job of a leader is not about being in charge, it's about taking care of those in our charge. And I don't think people realize this, and I don't think people train for this. When we're junior, our only responsibility is to be good at our jobs. That's all we really have to do. And some people actually go get advanced educations on, so that they can be really good at their jobs, accountants or whatever, right? And you show up and you work hard and the company will give us training how to do our jobs. They'll show us how to use the software. They'll send us away for a, a few days to get trained in whatever it is that we're doing for the company. And then they expect us to go be good at our jobs. And that's what we do, we work very hard. And if you're good at your job, uh, they'll promote And at some point, you'll get promoted to a position where we're now responsible for the people who do the job we used to do, but nobody shows us how to do that. And that's why we get managers and not leaders. Because the reason our managers are micromanaging is because they actually do know how to do the job better than us. That's what got them promoted. Really what we have to do is go through a transition. Some people make it quickly, some people make it slowly, and unfortunately some people will never make that transition at all. Which is we have to go this, do this transition of being responsible for the job and then turning into somebody who's now responsible for the people who are responsible for the job. And as I said before, one of the great things that's lacking in most of our companies is that they are not teaching us how to lead. And leadership is a skill like any other is a practicable, learnable skill. And it is something that you work on. It's like a muscle. If you practice it all the days, uh, you will get good at it, you will get, become a strong leader. If you stop practicing, you will become a weak leader. Like parenting, everyone has the capacity to be a parent. Doesn't mean everybody wants to be a parent. That doesn't mean everybody should be a parent. Leadership is the same. We all have the capacity to be a leader. Doesn't mean everybody should be a leader. All right, hopefully that just gives you a little teaser on what it is. Like I say, it's good, relates how you move up, right? From a, call it a laborer, a worker, like he said, and then you go in, you get more skills, you develop your talent, you develop those skills, and now you move up. And as you move up, you become a manager and you become a leader, right? So then you're not 
the labor guy anymore. You're not where you started from. It's hard for people to do. It's hard for people to understand. Um, and there are skills that you have to maintain and, and, and learn as you become more than just that labor person. So hope you continue to watch that. Very good. Um, notice his demeanor, his, um, his delivery, that type of thing as well. Um, our discussion question this week, <clears throat> discussion topic, I should say, uh, battery operated stuff. We've talked about it a little bit. Um, you know, we mentioned it when we talked about chainsaws, but you know, let's let's have a discussion about it. What what do you like um, about it, about the battery equipment? Do you, would you would you try it in your business? Why or why not? Um, and what would what would make you change your mind? Right? Like what 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 are the what are the circumstances to to use it? What are the circumstances to not use it? Um, you know, let's just talk a little bit about what what that battery operated stuff is about. Um, because obviously, you know, we, we talked about it with the steel representative. <clears throat> there's developments, there's technology, all those types of things are coming, whether it's a chainsaw, a weed eater, or a car, that development in that battery is is is, for, is on the forefront of, of technology in the world that we live in. So it's something that if you may not, you can kick to the side now. You know what happens down the road. What 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 do you have to see down the road if you are not on board now? Um, I think it's good to kind of get that discussion going um, and go from there. That's all I got this week. We'll see you in lab and we'll put some of this together.